Episode 2 of Don't Nods Tell Me Why. I've already done a review on episode 1 so if you haven't seen that then please go check it out and if you have already seen that and you're returning to come and watch episode 2 then I just want to say a massive thank you for coming and listening to what I have to say about this episode. So let's get straight into it. <laughs> feel like the pace has picked up during this episode it was more exciting I really enjoyed as well the way that you have to look through all of the case files to find out information about what happened and I think it was nice that it was different rather than just talking to people to get the information um, there felt a bit more of a sense of urgency as well like you know you're on a timer and you need to hurry up to get the information before Eddie comes so I thought that that was really really good and I definitely as well felt like the bond between Alison and Tyler was much stronger this episode. I felt like you could really see it growing, you could see them becoming more comfortable with each other. The flashbacks were really interesting in this episode as well. I do still think that it is missing some of the drama that I usually love in these type of games. Again, this is a personal thing and I know I shouldn't be comparing to other games such as Life is Strange, but when when it's made by the same company I can't help myself I just feel like in life is strange every single episode there were quite a few things that happened that were very significant that were very urgent you'd have to be really quick with your reactions there'd be scenes where you'd be saving people like Kate on the roof and saving Chloe off the railroad and I found that really really exciting and I just think that because this game is largely focused on the past and the emphasis is on the past that it's kind of missing that excitement um, for example in this episode you turn up at the house and the barn's been set on fire someone runs out and knocks Tyler on the head and they run off um, but then we don't even get to see we just hear the noise as Alison is using an extinguisher to put the fire out and I was kind of disappointed because I felt like maybe that would be an opportunity for quite an intense and exciting fast-paced scene um, I suppose really it wouldn't have added largely to the story but I just think the interactivity would have possibly been better as I say I really enjoyed the scene where you're going through the case files it felt a lot more interactive because this game really only uses the A button or Y or X when you're doing replies so I just kind of wish there was a bit more gameplay involved Well, I found it very interesting where this game has turned into working out who the father of Tyler and Allison is and also just seeing that he's quite a dark character and that he is likely a large part of why the mum spiralled out of control or at least he didn't help her once she had. I feel like there isn't many characters though that could be eligible to be the father. First I thought it would be Sam Kansky because he has been going around to the property quite frequently, he had a spare key, he's very interested in the house and in the kids but at the same time he seems to have been someone who was going around often and helping at the house. The next guess I thought was Tom from the shop. Um, but I just really wouldn't like him to be the father because I feel like we've not had many interactions with him he seems quite happy in his marriage with Tessa but I am starting to think it could be the man who's on the boat with Tyler and Alison when they go to Dallas Crossing he's also in the store and he's buying fishing gear and talking about fishing things and the man who is their father is seen wearing fishing gear so it could possibly be him and I really don't know how I feel about it being him or 
or Sam or Tom. I kind of don't think any of them are a good match. I wish there was another option to be honest um, but I am interested to see where it goes, who is the father and what information that we find out about him. It might all fit into place better once we go into the third episode. However I did find that they're sort of clutching at straws when it comes to the plot because they see the man run out of the barn after he set it on fire and he's wearing fishing gear and it's identical fishing gear to the man that was there 10 years ago on the property the night their mum died and I just feel like it's too far-fetched like he wouldn't be wearing the same fishing gear 10 years on surely not the exact same thing and I just feel like the way you find out these clues the way you're piecing it together isn't always very innovative and I feel like when the whole drive of the story is this investigative side is this story from their past I feel like they should be a bit more effort maybe into how they draw these conclusions and things. the twist at the end of the first episode where we find out that Alison was actually the person who killed their mother because of course we've been led to believe through the entire episode as well through all of the advertising that came out before the game was released that Tyler was the one who killed his mother in self-defense because she was coming towards him with a gun he's been for 10 years in fireweed in the youth detention center and then suddenly at the end of this first episode we get this a huge surprise where we see that it's actually Alison who killed their mother trying to protect Tyler so I at first thought that this was very very good I thought it wasn't really a twist that was there just for the sake of being there like it did seem plausible but then as I thought about it more I just I mean I feel like I'm thinking into this a little bit much of course it's a game but at the same time like when you're a huge company and you're taking the time to fully make this game I feel like you would think into things a lot so I am as well um but basically Alison stabbed their mum in the back with a pair of scissors so that would never go as self-defense because it was in her back so it was as if Marianne was turned away or going away from Tyler as the police would suspect and that then he stabbed her of course it was Alison who came up behind her to save Tyler but the point is I don't see how he would have got a self-defense or manslaughter charge or anything of course they were children but I just feel like that really doesn't make sense like the fact that they've made Alison do it but to do it from behind just isn't plausible um, and then like their mother falls into the water and she's not dead like she's been stabbed and I'm assuming then that she drowns and also blood loss but the children don't try to pull her out or anything like that and of course I know in their eyes she was about to kill Tyler which is horrendous but we've seen through it you know with the book of goblins through certain memories through things characters have said and even through things Tyler and Alison have said that they did have a mostly positive relationship with their mother it seemed that she was not as accepting of Tyler for who he is but she clearly loved her children and she clearly tried to do what she thought was right for them even if often she ended up doing something that was actually detrimental to them so I just felt like they shouldn't have done that storyline in hindsight or that they should have made it more believable um it's not a big thing but it just got to me so yeah that's I wanted to talk about that so as episode two starts there is a montage and I am not joking when I say this is one of the most satisfying montages to date that I've ever seen I absolutely loved it um, it basically shows Alison and Tyler and they're mucking about the house and as they're going through rooms and behind things they're changing between being their former child selves and their adult selves and honestly like it was just done so well and I really really enjoyed it and it got me really excited for the game's second episode as well like I really liked the way that it opened and yeah it was just done really clever and it's just so satisfying to watch honestly <laughs> during this 
this episode as well, Tyler talks more about his transition. He says that soon he's going to have top surgery so that he no longer has to wear a binder on his chest and I thought that was really good that they included that. It was very interesting and I'm sure some people who don't have a massive understanding of how people transition, um, they might even look that up because they might not fully understand and I think that's really good because it's just a point of learning for people that they might be intrigued about what he's talking about and then obviously if people read into that people will then understand better um, the transition that transgender people go through if they so choose. Um, I also found it interesting that Tyler said at one point that it's been other people that have been the hardest part of his transition not himself because he always knew who he was but it's just been making other people understand and showing them who he is so that they understand and they believe him of who he is um and you know i think that really is a comment on society it's kind of emphasizing that if someone is so sure in who they are that they're willing to transition that they want to change their gender pronoun that they want to go by a different name and if they want to be accepted on their identification documents as the opposite sex to which they were born i think it just emphasizes that this isn't just a small thing i think some people particularly with children teenagers young adults they don't understand they think oh this is a phase this is this this is that but at the end of the day we all know ourselves better than anyone and if someone's willing to go to these lengths just to be who they truly are I think that really does show all of us that we should 100% accept them for who they are and understand that that is who they are because they know themselves better than anyone and it just shows as I said in the previous video that Tyler he is so confident in his who he is throughout this entire game he's not confused he's not muddled he's not lost because he's always known that he was a boy and that he is now a man so i thought that was really really good um to comment quite subtly it's not really attacking anyone but just him saying that the hardest part of his transition was actually other people rather than himself going through it additionally when tyler is talking to michael in the store michael says that he knows everything about tyler and that's because allison has told him everything and then he says oh i hope that's all right and tyler then says yeah my sister checked with me before she told you everything like including his transition and everything like that so i think that was really good as well because it emphasizes consent and it emphasizes that even though allison is tyler's twin at the end of the day this information is very sensitive it's about him and it's up to him who he wants that information to be disclosed to so she has still sought his permission when she's been wanting to tell her friend michael about his transition because it's something that's very very personal to him and i think it's just very good that it emphasizes that you should always check with someone before you ever would divulge anything on their identity and their transition and their journey because it's very very personal so i liked again the message that we got through the game on this Unfortunately though, I do think that Michael is quite a pointless character. Don't get me wrong, I liked him as a character. I loved the scene where him and Tyler were mucking about in the store, but at the same time it just felt flat because shortly after they've been mucking around, Michael is sort of hinting that he kind of fancies Tyler a little bit and he's interested in him in that way. And we've only previously seen Michael for a very brief period in the first episode, so it just doesn't seem as sincere and authentic you don't really care about their relationship developing and I think the point is that although Michael as well is a key character in terms of emphasizing the clinket culture so you could say yes he's a device for demonstrating the culture of the area but other than that in terms of adding to the story I really think that he's quite pointless because the problem is this game is only three episodes there isn't a lot of subplots going on it's literally one story it's one thing that they're trying to do and that is to work out what really happened to their mum why she was the way she was and just to examine their childhood so it doesn't really delve into any other relationships in the present it doesn't really delve with them 
chain like doing many things in life in the present of course Tyler and Allison build on their relationship but it's all based on things that have happened in the past so unfortunately I feel like if there'd been five episodes they could have branched this story out further of course had this investigative part of the story to be the focus but that they could have also engaged in further subplots and that would have been really interesting but the focus is so much on this investigative side and working out the truth of their past that anything that happens in the future just seems flat it just seems pointless it doesn't really add to anything because the story isn't about the present it's about the past so I am a bit disappointed about that because some of the things that I ended up doing during this episode I just felt like it was pointless I felt like it wasn't going to go anywhere the playing around with Michael yeah it was kind of fun it was a sweet scene but at the same time we barely know Michael I don't really understand how he could even have feelings for Tyler considering the fact that they only met like the day before um, and I just feel like even if he does like him it's not going to end up going anywhere like I'm sure there'll be one more scene or so in the third episode and I could be wrong he could really be a prominent character in next episode but I just feel like it just doesn't matter their relationship and it's a shame really because it just made me not care so I feel again like this review is quite negative um I have been enjoying the game and I am eager for episode three I would say I found episode two to be better than episode one of course episode one was set in the scene and episode two could have just been used as a skipping stone to episode three however I do think it is an episode within its own right I think we found out a lot of key information that was very interesting but it's still just not hitting the mark for me somehow and I really hope that it all pulls together for episode three so I am really interested to see what episode three is like please check out that review which will be next week if you enjoyed this video then give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you soon bye